In 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 1, it says, Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering to him. So the topic is the return of Jesus and our being gathered to him. How many of you would like to know more about that? Me too. Well, just let's skip down to verse 5. It says, Do you not remember that while I was still with you, I was telling you these things? Well, if he's writing it to them again, And he's saying, don't you remember? What can you know for certain? They forgot. So let's look at it. You'll have to turn the page back over. I'm sorry. Now we request, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus and our gathering him, that you not quickly, you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship so that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. Do you not remember? No, I'm sorry. We screamed in the boat. But while I was still with you, I was telling you these things. Paul is talking to the church at Thessaloniki about the return of Jesus. And he gives them three warnings, and he's given them to them before. And you've read them before, but we lose sight of them, so we panic when change starts. Rather than be anticipatory, Jesus said, when you see these things happening, lift up your head because your redemption is getting close. And we get grumpy because our vacation got interrupted. Jesus' return is better than your vacay plan. There's three warnings. He says, don't become easily unsettled. I I took both the NIV and the New American Standard. They they say it a little differently, but it's similar. Don't become easily unsettled or quickly shaken from your composure. Don't be easily rattled. Secondly, he said, don't be easily alarmed. Don't be disturbed by a spirit or by a message. We've heard some disturbing messages. There's some disturbing spiritual activity, but Jesus, the the counsel we've been given is you don't need to be easily alarmed. And then he said, don't let anyone deceive you. If he warns us not to be deceived, you can know for certain that there will be a scale of deception taking place that is unprecedented. It'd be like me spending time warning you about being trampled by an elephant. Not a great risk. I'm not going to spend my minutes doing that. But I might talk to you about not getting wet on the way to the car. Because it's highly probable your hair is going to get destroyed. (laughs) Somebody's watching this in Arizona going, what are they talking about? I don't know what they're doing. And then Paul gives us four reminders about the Antichrist. There's some things about the Antichrist. There is going to be a figure step onto the stage of human history that will accept the bargain that Jesus declined when Satan came with his temptations in the wilderness. He said, if you'll fall down and worship me, I'll give you the authorities over all these kingdoms. And Jesus rejected that invitation. There's a a person coming who will strike that bargain. He will become a global leader with satanic influence and power. He told us four things that he'll be, it'll be about, that the Antichrist will not emerge until the rebellion takes place or the apostasy occurs. Apostasy is a falling away, but I think it's more helpful to think of it in terms of rebellion. See, he's not talking about paganism growing. He's talking about people that have stood beneath the umbrella with a, of Christianity, with an affiliation with Christianity, but they will rebel against God's truth. I will not submit to the biblical worldview, to a biblical idea of family or morality or ethics. There will be rebellion. It will precede the emergence of the Antichrist. Secondly, it said the man of lawlessness will be revealed. He'll be made known. Don't worry about it. The Spirit of God will show you who he is. Amen is the word you're searching for. We have a helper. And then the, the Antichrist will oppose and exalt himself over everything that is called God. 
he will demand that he be worshipped. And ultimately, he'll take his seat in the temple of God. There'll be a temple built in Jerusalem. And he'll have the audacity to take his place in that temple. Now, Paul wrote to the church and said, don't forget this. You see, we, we get way torqued up about no toilet paper. Or this week, there hasn't been bread and milk anywhere. If it snows in Kentucky, we don't have bread and milk. And this week, we had two snowfalls in Middle Tennessee of five inches or more. I don't know when we'll have bread and milk again. And some of you have so much bread and milk at home, you're going to be making cheese. We panic about these disruptions in our routine, but we lose complete sight of the larger purposes of God that are unfolding in the earth. Hey, this is Pastor Allen. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, like it, and most importantly, share it with your friends. If you want to be notified when there's new content and we post new material, if you'll just subscribe to my channel and hit the bell, you'll get the notification. Most of all, I pray God blesses you as you continue on your spiritual journey and open your heart to the Lord. God bless.